Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Louis Tallarini. I'm the chairman of this year's Columbus celebration in New York City. Welcome to the mayor's Italian heritage party, which is the typical kickoff of our celebration of Italian heritage. And what an incredible venue this is. I'd like to also thank Dan Weiss, the president of the Metropolitan Museum, who's here with us tonight, as well as Tom Campbell, the art director of the Metropolitan Museum. To start our program, please welcome Chiara Civello. Chiara. Buonasera. C'è gente che ha avuto mille cose Tutto il bene, tutto il male del mondo Io ho avuto solo te Non ti perderò, non ti lascerò per cercare nuove avventure. C'è gente che ama mille cose e si perde per le strade del mondo io che amo solo te io mi fermerò e ti regalerò quel che resta della mia gioventù quel che resta 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 della mia gioventù quel che resta della mia gioventù grazie
Chi te li dà la borsetta di mamma tu vuoi fare l'americano, americano, americano. Ma se è nato in Italia, senti me non c'è sta niente a fare, tu vuoi fare l'America, tu vuoi fare l'America, tu vuoi fare l'America. Oh, ma da poco capì chi devo bene quando gli parli in me. Sotto luna, come ti viene in mente di I love you, hey, tu vuoi fare l'americano, americano, americano, senta me che tu fa fa, tu vuoi vivere alla moda, ma se bevi whisky in soda, tu ti senti disturbato, a ballo il rock and roll, e già che pesa boh, ma i soldi per cammella, chi te li dà la borsetta di mamma, tu vuoi fare l'americano, americano, americano, ma se è nato in Italia, senta me non c'è sta niente a fa, tu vuoi fare l'America, tu vuoi fare l'America, tu vuoi fare l'America. Grazie mille. Thank you, Chiara. And if anybody would like to see Chiara again, she's going to be at Joe's Pub on Sunday night, and she's just releasing her uh, new album, Kenzone. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the First Lady, Sherlane McCray, and Mayor Bill de Blasio. Buonasera. Buonasera. Che bella Chiara, che brava. Sì? Che fortuna essere circondata da così tante belle persone in un posto così bello. There you go. Okay, so I, I'm not Italian, but oh, what a beautiful language. Every song, every word, I mean, every word is like a note of a song. And so speaking it is like singing. I've traveled to Italy four times now, to Roma, to Venezia, and Napoli. Venezia, Venezia. It's so good to have an expert standing beside me. And, you know, there is no one I'd rather travel to Italy with than my husband. You heard that, right? I did. <laughs> but I have been lucky enough to explore the country a little bit on my own. Back in May, I traveled to Florence to attend a conference on black portraiture and to talk about the power of imagery and, and the power of art to illuminate and inspire. Uh, I wrote about it on my blog, Flow Nice. That's FLO.NYC, if you want to take a look at it. And while in Florence, I also had a chance to visit a villa for children with mental health disorders. Because as you may know, mental health is an issue that's very close to my heart. It was inspiring to see how the children benefited from living in a, a beautifully designed building, surrounded by nature, eating communal meals, and in other words, living the Italian life. I return from my journey with a greater appreciation for the traditions around food, family, and art, which run so deep and have immeasurable healing power. And I'm so delighted that we're celebrating Italian heritage here in this gorgeous palace of art, Bello Vero. You know you can always come back here, and I, and I hope you will and encourage your friends and your family to also come and savor the works of these exceptional Italian artists upstairs that are exhibited here. And it is now my pleasure to introduce a man whose love for Italy is clearly contagious. My husband and our mayor, Bill de Blasio.
Grazie, grazie, grazie mille, Sherlain. Benvenuti, Paisani. It is so wonderful to have you all here in this extraordinary place. Let's thank everyone at this museum who made possible tonight. Give them all a round of applause. And I have to tell you that I am blessed because, as you could hear a moment ago, my wife, even though she is not privileged to be Italian, she is the next best thing, a true Italophile, someone who loves everything about the Italian language, the Italian culture. And if you need proof, my dear friends, if you need proof, she was as enthusiastic as I was to name our children Chiara and Dante. <laughs> now, I have to tell you, our heritage means so much to us. And this is a time to really appreciate the impact that Italy has had in this world, that Italian Americans have had and the Italian diaspora in general. Because remember, we are everywhere. You go all around the world. Go to Australia, you'll find Italians. Go all around. And Italians, Carol Gardens, that's right, Buddy Scotto, you'll find Italians there too. <laughs> but uh, you'll find Baresi there. <laughs> so, so. But this last few weeks, we got to feel something very special because even though his nationality is Argentinian, his heritage is Italian. <laughs> and I remind you, the first words the Pope ever said as Pope to the entire world were buona sera. <laughs> and so we in this city, we had His Holiness in our midst, and you could feel something different. This extraordinary man, this visionary, this moral voice in a, someone that I don't think we've ever seen the likes of before. Someone who's calling us all to something better in the midst of a, the most modern, most rapid, technologically charged world. Here comes this clarion voice of good and inclusion calling on us to protect our earth and to love each other. I don't know what could possibly give me more pride in my Italian heritage than what Pope Francis is doing, and he was here with us. Wasn't that amazing? In Italy, they call, you know, in the newspapers, they call him Bergoglio, like he's just another Italian. But here, here we appreciate that his Italian heritage gave him so much of that humanity, that hum humanism, that sense of reaching out to all. And so it's a very proud moment for all of us who honor our heritage, and it's a reminder. And I had a few, just a very few moments to speak with Pope Francis, and I chose to use those moments doing my best I could in Italian, because I wanted it to be a more personal connection than to speak through an interpreter. But I told him that he was in the the greatest and the ultimate city of immigrants. And I told him that what he was doing and saying meant so much to immigrants all over the world. Because remember, here is a child of immigrants himself speaking about how we have to value and respect people across all boundaries. And he is speaking from his own experience as well. So it's an amazing moment in history and one that I think is inspiring to so many of us to to do even more, to reach even farther. Let me take a moment to thank so many good people who are here. I'm being handed even more good people to thank. <laughs> First of all, our Masters of Ceremony, and I want to thank him and everyone at the Columbus Citizens Foundation for their support. Let's thank Louis Tallarini. <laughs> Let's thank the dynamic Chiara Civello. Che brava! The Italian government is here, and we are better for it. Let's thank 
Council General Natalia Quintavalle and Deputy Council General Roberto Frangioni. I want to thank some of the people in our administration, but first a special thank you. Uh, you know, great leaders make us proud, and for a long time in this city we had a, a city council speaker that for any Italian American was a source of great pride because he did so much good and his heart is good in so many ways to this day playing such a great role in the city. Council Speaker Peter Vallone Sr. Let's thank him. <laughs> now when it is Italian Heritage Night Many members of my administration want to be here, and what unites them is many of them are of Italian heritage. The rest of them wish they were. <laughs> Some of them, like Tony Shores, wanted to be Italian so much that he married an Italian. Our first deputy mayor, Tony Shores, thank you. One of our most distinguished uh, Italians in the administration who spends every chance he can to go to every chance he can. He goes to Venice because he loves us so much. Dan Nigro, our extraordinary fire commissioner. I'm calling out the Italians first so no one else take offense here. Joe Pont, who is our extraordinary commissioner of Department of Corrections. Well, he's also Portuguese, but we'll call him Italian tonight. This name, you know he happens to be one of us, our City Legislative Affairs Director, John Paul Lupo. In Boca Lupo. And our Commissioner for the Department of Aging, Donna Corrado. And now for the wannabes, our <laughs> Community Affairs <laughs> Commissioner, Marco Carrion, our International Affairs Commissioner, Penny Abby Wardena, our Commissioner for Design and Construction, Fenioski Peña Mora, and our Commissioner for Veterans Affairs, Lori Sutton. Let's thank all of them. And, and very importantly, given where we are, our Acting Commissioner for the Department of Cultural Affairs, Eddie Torres, thank you for all your help this evening. The, Amongst elected officials here tonight, I'm going to say the ones I know. If others show up, we will, we will call them out. State Senator Liz Kruger, <laughs> City Councilman Vinnie Gentili, and I think Assemblymember Phil Goldfeder is here. And again, a thank you to the Metropolitan Museum, a thank you to Columbus Citizens Foundation, and to my very dear friend who helped us conceptualize this amazing setting. Many of you know him. I deny any knowledge of him. John Calvelli, <laughs> Executive Vice President the Wildlife Conservation Society. That's an inside joke. Now, let me tell you that uh, I have had the most tremendous honor, and Charlene and I, we, we've experienced our connection to Italy so deeply because, you know, I think everyone knows, in Italy there's a feeling for New York City that's absolutely amazing. How many of you have seen Brooklyn chewing gum, for example? Okay, so there is, uh, the people across Italy, maybe it's because so many of our immigrants who came from Italy came here or came through here, but there's a sense of New York being a direct, deep, deep, deep connection to Italy. So when we traveled together last year or when we've gone separately, the warmth and the embrace is extraordinary, but it also has been amazing for us because we've gotten to meet so many great leaders in Italy, so many people are doing so much in Italy. Our dear friends that we've met, mayors of great cities of Italy like Dario Nardella in Florence and Ignazio Marino in Rome, Luigi De, Ma De Magistris in Naples, are inspiring to us and the friendship that we've built with these leaders because they're doing the same things that we're trying to do here. They're trying to include everyone. They're trying to address inequality in an uplifting way. They also, every city in Italy now has communities of people from all around the world. So people's experience are becoming so much in common. And we, every time we go to Italy, get re-energized. Now, if you listen to Italians, they always have something to tell you is wrong with their country. But, <laughs> but for we who visit, it is so obvious that we have so much to be proud of. And it plays out in this country, the reality of the United States of America and certainly the reality of New York City, so imprinted with Italian culture, so imprinted 
with the sensibilities of the Italian people. This city could not be what it is today if it weren't for what Italian Americans did for it. That is a fact. And you know, you can look around this beautiful museum and you can think about the contributions that Italy has made to the world. You can see the Caravaggios and the Raffaelles and the Canalettos. You can see all the amazing art and culture and all the thinking that emerged out of Italy that frames modern life today. But at the same time, remember the people whose names we never got to know, the people who built this city brick by brick, stone by stone, the working people who had such strong values. They may not be famous, but they deserve just as much respect and renown as those great artists. And we are their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And look what this extraordinary city has allowed all of us to do. So there's so much to celebrate tonight. I will conclude by saying I am very, very proud of the fact that because I had someone who shared my devotion to our heritage, that not only did the names go to Chiara and Dante, but they love Italy too, and so much so, Chiara last year, she's at Santa Clara University, a wonderful Jesuit college in California, and last year she lived in a dorm called Casa Italiana. So she's carrying it on. And Dante de Blasio, who will list for you in order of priority and preference which Roman emperors were greatest, he'll go down the whole list for you, because he knows and appreciates so much what Rome did that we still feel today. But Dante de Blasio is using his time at Yale University to study Italian this semester, carrying on our heritage. So since I have validated to you that our family believes in it, I can say one thing. I have only one ask of you this evening. I know I am preaching to the converted, but I want to say it with all my heart. And I know our friends at the consulate feel the same way. Take every opportunity to encourage the next generation to learn the language and to celebrate the culture. Maintaining the language and maintain the connection. It doesn't matter whether your ancestors are two or three or even four generations away. We have something precious, and we have to keep it, and we have that opportunity to pass it along. So, buona festa a tutti. Grazie tanto. Buonasera.